So for once, this isn't the classic Ferrari versus Porsche battle, and I'll tell you why. It's because the Ferrari 458 Italia is now so expensive and so competent that the cheap, by comparison, £110,000 GT3 RS is an entirely different marketplace. But this is an interesting comparison nonetheless. First of all, these are the cars of the moment, that the cars we're all talking about, that are the cars we all lust after. And there's something more here. There's something digital versus analog. You see, Ferrari is very keen to tell us what it's done with the systems on the 458, and having driven it, I can tell you they are sensational. This is the first car that takes black boxes and actually adds to the enjoyment for the driver. Whereas the Porsche is arguably the last of the old school. It still has a stick between the seats and it makes you work hard for its performance, but it is, in my experience, uniquely rewarding for all that. So here we are, we've got perhaps the first of a new type of supercar, and sadly perhaps the last of an old type of supercar. We're nowhere near a circuit, we're on the road in the UK. I'm fascinated to find out how this turns out. Like all the best designs, the 458 was influenced as much by function as it was a need for prettiness. It has a drag coefficient of 0.33 compared to the 430's 0.34, so it's a slight improvement. But it's claimed to generate over 360 kilograms of downforce at 202 miles an hour. The most interesting aspect of the front aero package are those moving vanes in the radiator intakes. They move at speed, pushing more air into a channel that vents by the front light cluster. It's very, very trick. The side profile's nice and clean too because there are no air intakes for the engine, just two small ones low down for the gearbox. The triple exhaust is a sexy nod to the F40 and it looks plain, well, humpable. There's masses of aero going on back here too, managing hot air to get the best from the rear diffuser and create some meaningful downforce. Like I said, Ferrari claims 360 kilograms of the stuff, but we've heard on the grapevine that those figures aren't quite being matched by uh, independent tests. The motor is 4.4 litres of genius engineering. No titanium trickery, but it still revs to 9,000 RPM and gives 562 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque. And it's got a proper fuel tank too, 95 litres for the full GT effect. The cabin's a treat. Funky, futuristic, intuitive and beautifully built. It smells expensive and the optional carbon back seats are for want of a better word, plain lush. Next to the insectile, almost angry looking 458, the Porsche is much more conventional, but it's still very, very aggressive. It looks like it wants to fight you. There are no moving vanes, no clever aero, just a monster splitter and rear wing combo that gives plenty of downforce. Porsche claims 170 kilograms at 186 miles an hour, which, from my racing experience, sounds a bit more believable than the 458 claims. The motor is mechanically identical to the 3.8 litre 6 in the base GT3, but it has an improved intake, revised ignition timing and a titanium exhaust, so it gives 444 horsepower and 317 foot-pounds of torque. It's 100 kilograms lighter than the 458, but in fairness, the Fandango absolutely nails it with 378 bhp per tonne compared to the Porsche's 324. Ceramic brakes are standard on the 458, but they're an option on the GT3 RS. These are 380 millimeters compared to the Ferrari's enormous 398 millimeter fronts. The cabin's not quite as basic as the RS badge might lead you to believe. This car has nav, an iPod thingy, and even foldable seats, which of course are completely useless when all you have in the back is a load of scaffolding. Oh, and it has lots of stickers, which don't make it any faster. to the owner of this amazing vehicle a few minutes ago and uh, I suddenly remembered that I own a Ferrari 512 at the moment, a 512TR, and I just can't believe how far they've come in that time. You know, in, in, in a decade and a half, I know it's a long time, they've completely re-approached the subject of fast cars. Suffice to say, on UK roads, the 458, the ride's a little bit busy, I've now got it 
in the softer damper, but it's still quite busy, but good Lord, does it cover ground. It's got that kind of any time, any place performance and it's spread of abilities is what marks it out for me. The one minute in race mode, full race mode, it's an absolute chomping maniac. It's so fast, it's so up you. Yes, the steering remains quite light and a bit too quick and a bit lacking feel, but it's an amazingly exciting experience. And then when you want to, like now, you just knock it into automatic, the double clutch gearbox becomes the smoothest automatic imaginable, and you've got something, well, that you could literally use every single day. I stand by what I said when I first drove it. There should be a crime against not using this car every day. Do you want to hear some engine noise? Well, get a load of this. I'm not sure it comes much better than this. Actually, it does come a bit better than this, and it comes better than this in the white German car, because the white German car sounds more authentic. The 458's noise is a little bit synthetic, a little bit synthesized, but I'm spitting hairs here. finding it quite hard to fault this. I know it's predictable, but they do come at the subject from sort of different angles. It's really, really surprising. But the end result is two cars that are very satisfying to drive fast and slow. They're just great road cars, truly great road cars. I will never tire of just doing this though. When Evo finally figures one of these, or when someone finally figures one of these, it's going to go really fast. I reckon we're looking low sevens to 100, maybe even a high six. I remember first seeing the McLaren F1 road test in Autocar all those years ago, May 1994, if my geek memory serves me well. And you know what? I thought cars would never go into sixes again, but clearly this is going to. Is it really worth? 200 grand, yeah, it's worth 200,000 pounds of any car enthusiast's money. Go and sell your house.